Hello, my name is John Piper. I've been trading since the 80s. I run something called The Technical Trader. I've been working with clients uh, for many years now. I just published my new book, which is called The Way to Trade Better. It's the second in the sequence following The Way to Trade, which I published in uh, 1999, uh, which is very well acclaimed. It's been translated into various different languages, Chinese, Russian, German, to name a few. And I wanted to write The Way to Trade Better because although the first book, as I say, has been re received very warmly and is a bestseller in its field, it addressed the idea of developing your own trading personality. Uh, this is something that uh, other authors rarely look at. They tend to plug their own method. Um, I don't feel that's appropriate. I think we're all different human beings. We have different ways of doing things. And so I think you have to develop your own style. Now the new book takes us a stage further because developing your own trading personality is one thing, but to make money as trading it requires something very different. That's why I've subtitled this book, Transform Your Trading, into a successful business. Um, before I start, I think I, think I can actually give, give a fair summary of the book from a, a recent review by Jeff Fitzpatrick, the editor of Forex Trader Magazine. And he said, I like John Piper's book. I like it a lot. And it will certainly be reading some of his other books. There are two reasons underpinning my resounding endorsement and recommendation of this book. The first is that he recognizes that as traders, we must all find our own trading style one that works for us. Piper's approach is to provide a set of basic techniques that are required by every trader over which they can go on to overlay their own unique trading system and style. As a successful trader, training trainer and writer on the subject of trading myself, I know that successful traders rarely follow the exact rules that are provided with, with by other trainers, whoever that trainer might be. Piper breaks the trading process down into what he calls the five pillars. Focus, style, trading, trade size, and forming winning bets. He goes on to provide three simple, fairly universal rules that can be applied wherever trading system and style of trading is being engaged in. I'm very pleased to have reviews like that, um, but it does underline the point about personalizing your trading and making it work for you. Now, I'm actually doing a series of these videos, and what I plan to do is make all of my books, possibly, into video books. Um, this is my first stab at this, and this is an introduction of this one, and I'm going to start with my current book, The Way to Trade Better, uh, and basically read you a chapter of what I consider a, a fairly important part of the book, um, and then, then discuss it more generally. So the video series will be, uh, I think, well, I hope, very valuable uh, than merely just the book. I'll also be reducing audios um, so that people who want to play them in the car and such like uh, can do so. So without more ado, let me go on to doing, doing just that. I'm actually going to start on page 112. This is the chapter called, in fact, section five. There aren't any chapters, and um, there are sections. Section five, good habits and bad habits. Uh, problem 16, basically in the book, I look at various different problems problem areas which I feel a lot of traders um, share with these, these problems and I look at each problem and then I look at the solution to the problem. So in this problem, problem 16, I find it very difficult to trade in size but realize unless I do so I'll never make enough money from trading. This problem is ultimately what trading is all about. In the market size does matter. It's certainly true that you do not want to be trading in size until you've dealt with the, all the issues in this section of the book, but once you've done so, a failure to trade in size will doom you to never be able to buy the good stuff in life through your trading. Let me define size. Some clients I have trade at 500 pounds a point. That's definitely size, but it's not a size you need to worry about until you're ready for it, and some may prefer to stick at lower levels. Personally, I've traded at around the 500 pound level and above, but these days I tend to stick to a maximum of around 50 pounds per point, although it does depend on trading. And with a thing like the VIX, for example, I'll trade at much higher levels. Let's look at this from the aspect of how many points you may get out of the market in any one month. Some traders have developed short-term strategies that may pull in 100 plus points per month, but these strategies often include very tight stops. Size is not actually the major focus, it is risk you need to look at. If trading a £10,000 account, then a risk level of between 2% to 4% is recommended, although some prefer to go to 1%, and that's not a bad idea in fact. On £10,000, that equates to a total risk of £200 to £400. 
So your size depends on your stop, or where you would get out of the position. If you're going to risk 10 points, then you can go in at 40 pounds per point. You want to go for 4%, 10 pounds at 40 pounds per point is 400 pounds. But if your risk is 40 points, then you can only trade at 10 pounds per point. Looking at a trade, that is 500 pounds per point with a 10 point stop. The total risk is thus 5,000 pounds. 10 points of 500 pounds per point is 5,000 pounds. And this would meet the 4% rule if the account size was 125,000 pounds. So bringing in 100 points per month is very different if you're using a 10 point stop. And could that's trade at 40 pounds per point, then if you're using a 40 point stop, reducing your size to 10 pounds a point. To put this another way, your profitability is determined by two main factors, account size and your stop. Obviously, it also depends on your trading skills and how the market decides to behave in that particular period. All systems, of course, take drawdowns. Many of my clients are quite content with a profit of around £2,000 per month in the early days, but it does depend on what you want. And as I said in an earlier book, in fact, the title of an earlier book, Wealth is a Choice. And don't forget that trading is not an easy option and losses do occur. I then have a small case study, a case study which can be um, fairly general. Again, I come across many traders who are not reaching their full potential because they cannot bump up the size. There are many reasons for this and often they're right not to increase size because they have not reached the right trading stage due to one or more issues which I cover in this section. From what I've learnt working with clients, increasing trade size can be a challenge to self-confidence, confidence in the system being used, confidence in the advice received, and fear of loss. For some people, the fear of loss increases rapidly as the trade size increases. Understandably, as of course the potential loss is greater. Right, now we come to the solution to this issue. To an extent, this is the message of the entire book. There's nothing wrong with trading in, wrong in trading at whatever size you wish. But if you want your trading business to pay the bills and give you total financial freedom, you have to trade at the size that will do that. I've mentioned wealth as a choice a few times in this book, and I see this as a key message. It really is a choice, just like health and happiness are choices. And every day we make, trade, we make decisions which either take us nearer or further away from what we really want. A lot of these decisions are just merely habits, meaning they're decisions we've put onto a form of autopilot, but we can choose to become aware of these decisions, and we can choose to change them and the way we live our lives. I'm not saying it's easy, I'm just saying it is a choice. We can choose to take action, we can choose to transform into what we want to be, we can choose to work with people who will help us, or we can choose not to. It's fairly simple really. And to a large extent, that's what the book's all about. It's about making the choice, deciding what you want, and going out there and getting it. Because in my view, whatever you want, you can get if, you determine, if you're determined to do so. And you go out there and take the action required. And the action required is often not that difficult. It may be repetitive, it may take some years. I'm not, give, I'm not trying to sell you some get-rich-quick scheme. You know, I'm just trying to tell you that, uh, certainly in my life, if I want something, I work towards it, and so far, I've achieved it. And in the course of these video series, I'm going to be going through that in some detail and try and make this book especially eva valuable to those of you who put the work in. If you don't put the work in, then there's not much, much I can do for anybody, really. Uh, unfortunately, that's the, one of the key issues in life. You work and you get results. Uh, e even if you make mistakes. I mean, failure, I think, is very important. Uh, when you fail, you learn, and then you go forwards, you do better. Uh, and I think on that note, I'll call this uh, video uh, over. I hope you found it interesting and useful. I'll be back with the next, uh, next video as soon as I can organise myself to get it, get, get it published. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.